Hey everybody, this is TJR. Today I got a notification in my email from Amazon about their vinyl of the month, the golden era vinyl subscription service. This is a new thing that they're doing here. This is basically a record club that Amazon is doing, record club of the month. However, they are concentrating, they said, on this, at least this initial attempt at it, on what they refer to as the golden era. And I'm going to read a little bit about this here. Get an essential album every month. Now, of course, the first thought is, what do they consider essential? Who's going to decide what's essential? Let me continue reading. Join the club and receive one must-own record from the golden era of vinyl, 1960s to 1970s, it says. Each month, handpick by the experts at Amazon Music. Build the ultimate vinyl collection. Start or grow an enviable collection with some of the greatest albums ever. Iconic classics from artists like Pink Floyd, Aretha Franklin, ABBA, and more. A great gift for anyone who's just fallen in love with vinyl. I still consider myself to be pretty recent. It says subscribe with confidence. You can skip a month or cancel any time. Be among the first. Subscribe now and help us evolve our service by providing feedback on your experience. So I read through the rest of the hype on this, and then I looked at the FAQs, and one of them said, can I return the vinyl? The answer, yes. The Vinyl of the Month Club qualifies for free returns. The vinyl must be returned in new and unused condition. So you can't take the shrink wrap off of it. To return a vinyl, go to your orders and start the return, print the return shipping label, ship it. So... They are requiring that you ship it back. Of course, returning stuff uh, to Amazon is pretty easy. Just print the label, put the record back in the same box. Be careful how you open it, of course, and ship it back. You know, just uh, take it to a UPS store or any other outlet that you can do that. Um, Amazon has a fairly large amount of places that you can return these things to. TJR from the future, butting in on TJR from the past. And I feel I should clarify that statement by saying, at least here in Southern California, where you live, your mileage may vary. Now, as I shoot this video, there have already been some comments on the service, on the Amazon website, from individuals who are already users. Now, a few of them have expressed some concerns. Uh, one concern uh, is in regards to, you know, spending $25 for a record that normally sells for $20 on the site. And I can certainly understand this concern. I certainly want to, wouldn't want that to happen to me either. Uh, but a lot of those same people also turned around and said that their first album that they received from the service was Pink Floyd's The Wall. And this made them very happy. Because a vinyl copy of Pink Floyd's The Wall is way more than 25 bucks. So those customers who got that as their first album, they got a great deal on their first one. Now, of course, with something like this, I would expect that there's probably going to be some give and take. There will be some months when you will get a vinyl record that lists for way more than 25. But there might also be some months where you get a vinyl record that lists a bit less than that. So my advice is to monitor that, you know, keep an eye on it and evaluate it and see what you think. There were also those who expressed the concern that they would appreciate knowing what's going to be arriving before it arrives so that they can have the opportunity to cancel the shipment and not have to deal with sending it back. And I can understand that too. However, though, I began to realize that that's not really true. 90% of the time, after you buy a physical album on Amazon, doesn't matter if it's CD or vinyl, you will get an email almost instantly to download your most recent purchase. Amazon does this so you can listen to it while you're waiting for it to arrive. So you should be able to tell just from that email. But also, I can't imagine that you won't be able to see that album in your Amazon orders. 
What I don't like is, unlike a lot of stuff when I return it to Amazon, even after I've opened it, is by and large, I'm not required to box it up. I just have to take the item to like one of their drop-off centers like Kohl's and um, show them my QR code. They scan it and that's it. But I guess because of the fragility of this, they're asking that you do it this way. Interestingly enough, I should mention there have been a few occasions where I've bought a vinyl record from Amazon and returned it, but because it was defective, there was a problem with it physically. When I opened it up, maybe there was something uh, torn or broken about the packaging. Maybe the record itself had massive skips or pops on it. And of course, I'm going to return it. Those type of situations, I've always been able to just, once again, start the return on their website, take it to a drop-off center, like maybe a coal store, or UPS store, and I don't even have to box it up. I just show the QR code and they just take it back and it's done. Of course, in those cases, I'm just going to request that they replace it and send me a new one because I still want the record. So anyways, I can kind of understand why they're doing it this way, and that's because of the fragility of it. And of course, they want you to return it unused. So if you know you don't want to hear this album, you know, you just send it back. Now, of course, one nice thing is that if they send me a record and it's maybe not one I'm familiar with, and I don't know if I'm going to like it or not until I open it up and play it. Well, I subscribe to Tidal. Most people have access to some kind of streaming service like Spotify, which you can get for free. Uh, although I think it's worth it to pay for the service. But if you're going to pay for the service, you might as well get Tidal because it sounds better. Anyways, uh, no, Tidal doesn't pay me to promote them. I just honestly feel that way. Uh, but at any rate, though, if you haven't heard it, stream it first once you get it and then decide if you want to keep the album or not. Because once you open it, you've agreed to keep it pretty much. Anyways, though, I thought to myself, well, I think I'll do this. I think I'll try this. Maybe this is a good way for me to experience a lot of records I haven't experienced before, because while I do have a massive music collection, there are a lot of records that uh, are referred to as essentials by music writers, music critics that I may not have really listened to. And that was because back in the day, uh, there was no such thing as streaming. There wasn't the ease of that and the affordability of that. And you had to buy the music if you wanted to just give it a listen first. And don't get me wrong, I believe in paying for the music if you want to own it, pay for it. But back in those at that time, I couldn't afford to buy everything. I was a working musician and I was that meant I was poor and I was living hand to mouth by and large. And as much as I love music, I did buy a lot of CDs, but I was always buying them used. I was always getting them at the cheapest price I could. And I just couldn't afford to get everything. So there's a lot of albums that have been referred to as essential that I've never heard. And maybe this is a good way to start doing it here. Maybe this will uh, be a good way to start exploring into uh, other albums that I've heard about over the years, but have not yet listened to. And I thought to myself, even if I just get a copy of Pink Floyd's The Wall for 25 bucks, then it's worth doing if I, that's all I get out of it. Because you can cancel these things at any time. But I thought it might be a thing to try not only for my own benefit, but also to share with the rest of you, to tell you how the experience went, to tell you what I picked up. And I figure, hey, I can also talk about these albums because especially if I've never heard them before. <laughs> TJR from the future, butting in on TJR from the past. I also want to add for the record that in no way has Amazon offered me any kind of paid endorsement for this or any kind of promotional consideration. My choice to do this is simply that my choice. So I'm going to give this a try, at least for a couple months, and see what I think about it, and share with you uh, what was sent to me. And if I keep the album and decide to listen to it, give you a little review of the album. And that way, you can see if it's something you might like to do. Anyways, just wanted to share that. Looking forward to seeing what arrives first, and uh, I'll be sure to talk about it. This is TJR from the future, interrupting TJR from the past. And as soon as I finished filming this video, I signed up. And just as I thought, I immediately got an email inviting me to download or stream my purchase. So I already know what album is arriving. Additionally, the very next day, which is today, I could see that album in my purchases, which makes it very easy to just cancel it before it arrives. 
back to TGR from the past. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I also want to thank my patron supporters. If you'd like to be a patron supporter to this channel, it helps out a great deal. Go to patreon.com slash TJR, the original. If you can't become a patron supporter, that's okay. Uh, you can help show your support by just clicking the like button. Just doing that helps a great deal. Um, I'd love it if you click subscribe as well and smash the bell notification icon so you can know when I release new videos. That's if you haven't subscribed already. If you have, thank you very much. That helps a lot too. And another thing that helps a great deal is just simply sharing these videos on your social media. And that helps a great deal. And so let's see what happens with this. I think this should be fun. And that's what these things are meant to be, fun. Uh, don't take them too seriously. Um, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.